I started this video around the same time I started the channel. The soaker is pretty much on its way out now. So anything like this is going to be you'll have to go to the seed for next year. This video covers the entire growing cycle of this this plant, from getting the soil prepared to cooking it. So I hope you enjoy the video. I was about to rejuvenate the soil when I noticed the stuff that was covered by weeds actually looks pretty good. So instead of you know, going full through the whole process of having to rejuvenate all this, I'm just going to mix in, in some fertilizer and bone meal and call it a day. I was planning on putting in okra in these bags. Like so, uh, it shouldn't really matter too, too much, much about the fertilizer. But what I'll be using here is the Dr. Earth all-purpose fertilizer. And just a little bit of bone meal. The thing you want to do is remove some of this mulch layer that I have, have from last year. Just take that and put them off to put that off to the side. Now I already weeded these, and you can see I've left up some weeds I just ripped ripped up in this one. That's okay. We'll just use that as, as more mulch. We'll reuse this mulch, by the way. Which is why I'm putting it here instead of just throwing it away. So I got a few more weeds in here. Yeah, get rid of him. Okay, looks good. Try and get as much mulch as you can up if you have have it laying down on anything. That one looks good. Most of this mulch is pretty well broken down already. So I will probably want to put more in when I finally do this. Let's start with this one over here. Yeah, a little bit of root there. All we'll have to do is just a handful. The Dr. Earth, scattered around. A handful of the bone meal, scatter that around, and just mix it in. And I'll just do that with each one of these. Got all the, the fertilizer mixed into all these, and something I noticed while I was doing that, I have an equal number of ones I did, did rejuvenation on. So we can actually test to see which one did better. The ones where I just did a full rejuvenation of the soil, or the ones where I just mixed in, in fertilizer. I'm guessing that we're not going to see much of a difference between the two. But let's find out. Now, the only thing next to do is just water in the fertilizer. You just give each one a good soak. Just like so. It's okay if you even in overwater this. You can't really overwater. You almost it's impossible to overwater their grow bag because of how porous this material is. In fact, water, keeping up with watering with the grow bag is one of the troubles with them. Alright, our next step is the planting. I have here one of the okra pods from last year, which I let it dry and go to seed. Doing this one handed, but you can see the seeds inside the pod there. That's what we're going to be using to plant it in here. Let's get these things opened. Pretty simple, you just open them carefully like so, and the seeds will drop right out. Keep 
keep in mind if you're going to buy any seeds from try and buy okra from the store the seeds are going to be immature so you're not going to be able to get anything viable from those you usually pick nick okra way before or they're viable or for seeds now we only need 10 of these seeds so the rest of them are going to go in this little little plastic bag egg for later just want to place each seed around the center of the pot just press it in slightly not too deep and just do that with each pot my mulch from wherever I can find it all this leaf litter that's mulch you can also break up this old husk and see what the seeds were in Use this as mulch as well. Okay, everything's mulched and ready to go. A couple things to note. This lip here was folding down, so I put these sticks in to hold it up. This bag was full to the top up and it sunk down. And so this is something that, that you may run into. I usually don't like to fill the bags all the way to, to the top, but yeah, this works. Another thing I noted is I left a little space in the center of each one and that's exposed. That's so the seed can grow uh, without having to compete with the mulch. The mulch is there to help pull in the moisture here and to you know, and stunt any other growth uh, besides the seed I want. The ones that were or fertilized are on the left. And the ones that were completely rejuvenated are on the right here. So we're going to find out which one actually does better. Things, things put into place. Have the cardboard down and prevent roots from, from growing up into the grow bags or vice versa. And I put these baskets on on top of each one to, to uh, deter or any uh, critters from wanting to dig in here. I've had problems with squirrels trying to dig into my uh, garden quite a bit. The very last thing to do, we just give each one a little bit of water. And we're done. And just in time, because it looks like I'm beginning to lose my light. Now, just wait and see what happens. Watering, and I notice we started to get some sprouts here. See right there is one of them. And so far, count is the ones where I just mixed mixed fertilizer in. All five appear to have sprouted. On the site that I just rejuvenated the soil. Looks like we have four out of the five that have sprouted. Now that doesn't necessarily tell us anything and it's still very early so that last one could still sprout. But that's how things are sitting right now. Oh, it's sprout. So it looks like I lost one of these, these okra. I think it was just a, a weak seed. Is at this stage of development, they're not really relying on the soil quality. It's more a matter of uh, the uh, how damp the uh, soil is and the temperature. So I'm just going to replant it here. Should have enough time for it to uh, get caught back up. It looks like it's about time to take these baskets off. And everything's doing good. A replant here is doing really good. So that shows that it was just a weak, weak seed. Look at to removing these baskets. And again, 
these baskets just came from the Dollar Tree. They're very cheap. I'll probably leave the basket on that one since it's a little bit smaller, but it should be okay. Gotta do some weeding on this guy. And there we have it. A little over a month in and the yoker is looking pretty good. This one's a little bit stunted because it got chewed up by something. The one next to it also got chewed up a little bit. This shows how polyculture can help. If I had you know, this plant next to a different plant, they wouldn't have moved, moved from this plant over to this plant. They might have only found this plant and left have this one completely alone. It's been a little over two months now. We've got a bunch of buds coming up, up on here. That flower right there. Buds on this one. Over here is starting to develop. So I should be able to get a harvest pretty soon out of this. Here we have the flower in full bloom. I think I see some okra that are actually ready. Yeah, that's good. That's about exactly the size you want, about the width of your palm. Any bigger, it can, it can start getting kind of fibrous. So I'm going to pick this one here. This one I could actually pick Nick as well. Though, I think I'm going to let that go for another day. So we have our first, first piece of oak right, right there. And there's the oak row. Overall, I'd say with the experiment between in which one did better, he did about the same. The only difference with it was uh, the light. These back ones seemed to get a little bit less light, and so they were a bit stunted. And of course that one, they got stunted it from being chewed on. A lot of people complain that okra is slimy. Here's at least one way you can prepare it so it's not slimy. First of all, what you want to go for with the smaller pieces is to avoid the slime. Larger pieces tend to be more slimy and more fibrous. Again, usually about palms width, width works the best. Another thing to do you know, is when, once you wash it off, you want to make sure it's completely dry right before you use it. The moisture on the you know, plant will make it more slimy. I washed these off ahead of time, and I dabbed them with the paper towel and left, left them on the second paper towel to be completely dry. Something else you can do while preparing is add a little bit of salt to it, and also a little bit of citrus. This can also help you know, take out the slime. Uh, don't recommend steaming it. You, I'm going to be baking it, it right now. If you're not growing your okra and you just have to uh, buy it from the store, don't buy frozen. Try and get fresh and try and get, get them small like this. Again, you want to go about palm size. They usually don't sell them um, this small, although due to uh, marketing. Take the okra. Cut the ends off. This piece is older. They don't last very long once you've picked them, but this should still be edible.
you want, you can also cut them, them in half, half like so. Or dice them up. Once you have your okra cut, we'll add a small amount of oil. I'm using sesame oil. You can use whatever oil you like. I'm just going to try and use a little bit of this. That might even be too much right there. Just try and get it evenly coated. Actually, I'll add a little bit more of that. And a little bit of garlic powder. Now this is good just like this, but I'm also going to add a little bit of onion powder as well. That's all you need. You can also add a little bit of salt right now, or if you like celery salt. Now they're ready to be cooked. Another thing to help with your okra not being slimy is to cook it in high heat. I've got my oven in, in preheated to 400 degrees and I'll be cooking in this batch uh, for about 10 minutes. If you're doing a larger batch uh, you may want to uh, go up to 500 degrees is for 20 into 25 minutes. I think I'm going to give them another 10 minutes. And there you go. I have a little bit of golden brown going on, on here. This one may actually be a little bit overdone. And that's how you prepare your okra. From the soil to the plate.